So next functional group will do carbonyl groups. And carbonyl groups like to fragment in the same way. You've got a carbon-oxygen double bond, and so they'll break the carbon-carbon bonds next to that. Now let's start off with butanone, just because again, it gives a nice little structure. Okay, molar mass is 72. So we can see straight off that in this case, we do have a nice significant molecular ion. So carbonyl compounds, aldehydes and ketones, you will frequently see the molecular ion. Okay, now as we keep looking here, we can see that's our favorite little 29, that's little peak at 15 and so on. We've got our molecular peak at 43. Okay, and then another peak here at 57. Now you would be forgiven for saying that at 43, is of course that nice little propyl group, CH3, CH2, CH2, except when you look at butanone itself, you're not going to have a CH3, CH2, CH2 peak. You are going to have the ethyl peaks, that's the 29. You can see methyl going there to give us the 15 or there to give us the 15, but we don't have a propyl. Where does the 43 come from? Well, let me tell you, because it's exactly the same idea as we saw with the alcohols. First of all, we will have this radical electron come down here into the carbon oxygen bond. We will then homolytically split. We'll start off with this one here, um, the carbon carbon bond next to that carbon oxygen bond. One electron going into the carbon oxygen bond, one electron going off to make this into a radical. And so we make this ion here which is called an acillium ion. You've actually seen these acillium ions before as the proposed intermediate in the friedel crafts acylation. But anyway, this particular acillium ion, we got CH3, so that's 15. There's a carbon, so that's 27. There's an oxygen giving us the mass of 43. So that's where the base peak comes from. Now, of course, that was breaking one of those carbon-carbon bonds. How about we think about breaking the other one in exactly the same way. So again, this is just like we were seeing for the alcohol. The radical and the oxygen comes into a carbon-oxygen bond, homolytic cleavage of the bond next to the carbon-oxygen bond. And so in this case, we lose the CH3 dot radical there, and we're left behind with this acelium ion. Let's see what the mass is. That's CH3, so that's 15 plus CH2, so that's 29, plus a hydrogen, so that's 41, plus an oxygen, so that's a mass of 57. So there we are. We can explain pretty much the big things in butanone. We've got the molecular ion, and then we have the products from the breakage, the homolytic cleavage of the carbon-carbon bonds next to the carbonyl groups, giving us these acillium ions. And we have, we see a little bit of that hydrocarbon residues as well.